I assume things could get sweaty, so we're gonna speed stick up. Have you ever speed sticked in bibs before? We're gonna, oh yeah, yep. All right, we got it. We got it. It says aluminum free, all day fresh. I will, uh, I will be the judge of that. So on this particular lake, I'm fishing in the metro. Um, there's actually really good ice. I've got like five and six inches of ice everywhere. Obviously you guys know it's gonna be like 50 degrees um, today and it's gonna stay kind of in the 40s. The rest of the week, maybe two weeks. So this might be my last day. So I'm just gonna enjoy it. We're going out there fishing and I just I just wanna set the hook and just enjoy it. It's, it's very rare where you get the opportunity to go ice fishing in 50 degrees and it's, if you have quality ice, Oh wow, four feet, four feet of water. Traditionally in like late February, uh, trucks would be still out. There'd be permanents everywhere and people would be fishing much deeper in kind of traditional spots, whether that be basins, near structure, anything like that. But with the warm weather, my buddies and I, we've just been finding fish extremely shallow, like four, five, six feet of water near weeds. Kind of like typical late ice spots. All right, Let's see how close we are to some weeds. And see what we can see in four feet of water. Those look like fish back there. Okay, I'll show you what I'm seeing. As I kind of turn this bad boy around, you can see I'm really only in like five feet of water here. Four, four and a half, five, and I'm looking out 80 feet. And, oh, that looks like a pot of fish right there. Back kind of at 70 feet. I don't know how well you can see that kind of with the sunlight. Those are definitely fish. Where are the weeds? We've gotta be close to some weeds. Kinda of 60-ish feet now. That's a wad of fish by the bottom. All right, let's try it. I lied, we're not gonna try it. I wanna look up a little bit shallower. All right, you can see I'm much shallower. I'm in like four feet here. I'll turn it kind of in closer. You can kind of see all that action there. Those are a lot of weeds. Oh! And those kind of look like fish in the weeds. Those big, yeah, you can see them. Those big, thicker fireballs. Nothing there. Oh my goodness. 20 feet away. And the weeds get thick, and it honestly looks like there potentially could be some more fish buried in those weeds. We're going mega shallow. Be home. Oh, there we go, fish on.
Nice bluegill. Oh, took my wigglers. Still down there. Oh, oh, he hit it. That was a nice mark. Fish on. So from where I am, this is a tad deeper. This is definitely probably five feet of water. They're still down there. Oh, I just missed one shoot. Oh, no, 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 that was a nice fish. Come on, eat the half ant. Fly up and do it. Flying up. Whack. <laughs> All right, first crappie of the day. Not a big one, probably be a good cutter. I didn't eat much for breakfast or anything, so I probably will end up keeping a couple crappies today. I'd like to get a couple a little bit bigger than that. That was a little small. Oh. Oh, I just missed it. It's a nice mark. He's going to do it. Got him. Oh, it feels like a really nice fish, actually. Really nice fish. I don't know what this is. Nice fish. Nice fish. Oh, it's a nice crappie. There we go. Beautiful slabberooski. <laughs> I'm going to keep him for the fry pan. Oh, man. They fight so hard. I, I would have thought that was a freaking bass. When you're in shallow water, when you hook up with them, they're so green. You know, getting them to come to the hole and chill out a little bit is, like, impossible. They're, they just have so much strength, you know, because as soon as you hook them, they're basically... Oh, another one. Another one. Another one. Another nice crappie. I think I got a little school of them underneath me. I'm going right back down. There's got to be more. Oh, come on. Come on. There's got to be more. That was sweet. That just showed up on me and clack it was on. There we go. Fish on. It's definitely a mix down there. I can tell the crappies fly in and smoke it. Or the bluegills kind of really want to stay at it. I don't know what that is. Maybe fish on. It's got to be a nice crappie. No. Pretty decent gill with a lot of heart. <laughs> they just fight so freaking hard. Coming up. Fish on. Especially if I don't stand up or drill another hole. Hopefully these fish just continue to sit here. But if I drill another hole, I think they're going to freak out. Because we're so shallow. That's why sometimes being in shallow weeds can be a sit and wait in game once you kind of locate some good weeds. On. Oh. oh, he hit it on the drop. Here we go. Oh, there's got to be more crappies around. Oh. Nice bluegill. Very cool, like kind of purpley color to them. Oh, eat it.
Wow, I have I have not drilled a second hole yet. It's weird that there's fish kind of staying underneath me because closer up by my sled that's that's where those patches of weeds were. And right now they're just kind of just outside of it. And usually if you can find a good patch of weeds, that's a good spot to sit, you know, because those fish will use those weeds and kind of continually swim by them or at least relate to them. But this is kind of like 20 yards off the weeds. Very quality average of bluegills out here right now. Oh, it's a nice mark. Come on. Funk. I can't believe I haven't had to drill more holes or move yet. The school didn't look that big on the Megalide, but I just, it's like they just keep coming. Can four feet of water. Oh, there's a crappie. All right, there might be a little school of crappies rolling in the mix here. He's a little smaller, but He'd be a good cutter. Oh, he came in. It's got to be a crop. He came a little higher. Nice blue ball. Wow. Oh, that's a big gill. This one was probably three, probably two and a half feet off bottom. Quality gill. Wow. One more drop. One more drop down there, then I should probably go get a different camera. Flying up. Nice little crappie. All right, crappies came back in. I'm interested to see if we're gonna get any perch or bass or anything else wild. Because there's definitely, at least what I saw in the Megalive, there's a lot of fish up here. And they looked all shapes and sizes. All right, dropping back down, come on. Light it up. Oh, they're coming back. I was walking around a little bit there, but now they're back. Oh. Oh. 
bluegill. It's got to be. Denied. Come on. It's a nice mark. Pound the mud a little bit. Absolute aquarium down there. It's like fishing in a barrel. Oh, I just had a nice one on. Shoot. Nice bluegill. Wow. A good time. They're still down. I'm just going to keep catching if they keep staying underneath me. Oh, that was a hard bite. Black. They're still there. Nice mark. Nice mark. Hundreds, hundreds of fish in four feet of water. Hundreds. All right, I seriously got to stop moving around. I just stood up really quick and I can see the multiple marks in the Vexlar just go Shoo! so they're like they're skittish but it makes sense just because you know, they're this far away 
come back. Come back. Come back over here. Nice bluegill, wow. The average out here is incredible. So many, I don't know, probably eight, eight and a half inch gills, but super tall. In a couple of years, this lake is probably gonna be just nuts with the amount of big bluegills. I think that's kind of why I'm letting them go, just because, I don't know. There's definitely plenty out here, but I just, I wanna see this lake explode and have giant gills. I'm gonna do something a little bit different this afternoon. Um, I'm gonna combine two different shore lunches. And I've had a lot of shore lunches, but not this combo. I'm gonna try a little bit of cornmeal mixed with spicy buffalo. And my whole thought process is cornmeal sticks to the flavor really, really good, coats it great. Just a good base flavor. And then I'll do 50-50 with the spicy buffalo because I like a little spice in my life. So I'll give you the report if it's good or not. Um, it's just a combo I've never tried, so. We'll give it the gas. Let's um, uh, let's heat the oil up and then, yeah, throw the flays in there. I know it's a tiny pan, but I'm gonna try. Uh, I don't know if I should try to put all six in there or just three at a time. Maybe just three. All right, we'll go for the flip here. Oh, golden. Golden. <laughs> Those look freaking bomb. I've said it probably 50 times over the course. I don't know how many videos, but everything tastes better out on the ice. Even when it's not brutal cold, it's just hot food always tastes good when you're on the lake. Dang. All right, let's try it and see how we did. I don't know how well you can see that. Wow, seriously swimming. 
don't know, an hour and a half ago. Um, there's only three flays on here, and you might be asking, three fish equals six flays. I have never once in my entire life fried fish and completely fried all the fish and then ate it. As I'm frying fish, I have to eat it. Um, it's just, it's almost impossible not to, so. Very good. And I'll give you my honest opinion after I finish a couple more flays. Look at that bad boy. Delicious. Mm. The flays coated very well. They have a good flavor. But to be honest, I wish I would have mixed in more of the spicy buffalo. I can taste it. It's good. I just, I love buffalo flavors, so I wish I would have put more in just to give it more of that buffalo zip, but as far as general taste, very good. It would be a great crowd pleaser, especially if somebody wasn't into that spicy stuff. I like it. Definitely first time I'm ever saying this, but I feel like winter went fast. The ice season went fast. Just went fast. And that has like never been the case. It seems like, you know, after Christmas and New Year's and January ends, it just seems like winter is so harsh, at least where I'm from, kind of like in the center of the ice belt, kind of around the metro or south metro of Minnesota. And it seems like winter will just linger on and linger on. It'll be so brutal cold. And you just, you talk to your neighbors, your friends, and you just talk. Dang, it's a long winter. We just got piled on with snow. Dang, it's a long winter. It's negative 20 out. And this year, I'm just like sitting here, kind of reminiscing about the whole winter. Um, and if any of you have followed along all the whole ice season, watched all the videos, I appreciate it so much. Just felt like it went fast, you know? We did a lot of cool things. We were up north a lot just because up north had quality ice. And, um, God explored a lot of new lakes but it just feels like I blinked my eye and we went from the St. Paul Ice Show all the way till now so right back there is where we kind of caught a majority of our fish and you can kind of see I kind of expanded on that with the mega live and the auger drilled a lot more holes over there a couple holes here and just kind of worked my way and this is all just pretty similar, um, just a weedy, shallow bay. It's gnarly to me that fish are kind of acting this way already. They're acting like it's it's late ice. They're pushing up in three to five feet of water, and obviously every lake is different. They might not be doing that on every lake, but past couple of days, that's just kind of what my pals and I have found. Just fish are shallow. And that's fun, you know, because if you have really poor ice conditions near you, um, and the ice is just getting off. Don't be afraid to go from shore, a public dock, a kayak, your boat if you can get it in and just fish shallow weeds because everything lives in shallow weeds, especially this time of year. And um, yeah, they're just, they might be here for a while. They might just kind of be staging in these shallow, shallow weedy bays all the way up until when they spawn. It's just, it's crazy. They're already this shallow kind of at the end of February, but yeah, what a gorgeous day. I'll show you my setup and some of my gear really quick. I don't know how much I talked about it. This whole ice season, I've basically been running the Strike Master 24V. Extremely impressed with it. Um, it's nice, it's light, it's compact. I don't burn drills up using it. I also have the Light Flight in the six inch and that thing rips like absolute butter. But I haven't had to go through a ton of ice this year, so I've just been carrying this auger with me. Um, it's an eight inch auger. I can fit my mega live down it. And like you can see, it's just, it's extremely light, compact. These batteries last a long time. I haven't had to burn drills out because this is an independent auger and everybody likes it. My mom has used it. My dad's used it. My girlfriend's used it. It's just, it's really simple and efficient. It has forward, it has reverse to flush your holes out. Um, kind of has a safety trigger here so if you push this or push this it won't drill but if you push this and this 
it'll start to go. And one thing I really like is it almost kind of has a delay. If you can kind of see that, it's definitely a built-in safety feature, but if I press this and this, it kind of gives you a beep like, all right, here we go, we're about to spin. It's not like I just barely touch my drill and it takes off. So that's one thing I really, really liked, especially with my girlfriend and buddies using it who don't normally drill a bunch of holes. It's really, really sweet. Besides that, the Mega Live has been an absolute game changer. You guys have seen me use this all winter long. I love how well it does not only in deep water, but in shallow water too, which is pretty dang impressive. Usually forward facing sonar is not really built for extremely shallow water, but all year long, Buddy Hayes and I have been creeping back into new water and taking a look at a lot of weeds and seeing actual individual fish or schools of fish in the weeds. And it's very impressive. I'll link that down below as well. Besides that, the Vexlar FLX30. This is an absolute unit right here. Vexlar in general has always been the best flasher you can use basically in shallow water. It's great in deep water too, but the 30 is really dynamic. Um, it probably won't pick it up on the phone just because it goes so dang fast, but the 30 is extremely dynamic because of its target separation. And I guess I'll shut it off. But what I mean by that is basically on here, I can see in between my jig and fish so clearly and it's extremely responsive. I still to this day think I don't really want to fish with a hummingbird or a live scope or anything in down mode just because there's that delay on an LCD screen. But with the flasher, there's absolutely zero delay. I can see weeds really well with it. And the 30, I can really kind of dial everything in. So right here's my zoom. I can zoom down to the bottom six feet, the bottom 12 feet. Uh, from there, I can go to power mode. It has three power modes. It's got low power, medium power, high power, which is really, really nice because if you're in extremely shallow water like this and your beam is so close to the bottom and so close to your jig, you got to be in low power mode. And also those fish can feel it, man. If you're fishing in four feet of water like we were today and I'm just beaming sonar on their head, they can truly feel it. And um, here's a good test right here. Basically, maybe even the camera can pick it up. You kind of hear that, that clicking right there? That's what the fish hear. Now we'll turn it to medium power. Can you hear it at all? Just a little bit. And we'll turn it to low power. Nothing, absolutely nothing. Vexar's low power is so incredible. And especially for finicky fish or if you're fishing in shallow water, it's like, <laughs> it's a need. It's deadly. Otherwise, you're just buzzing the fish on the head and, and a lot of times they get freaked out or it can break up a school. Um, besides that, yeah, I can change my frequency really easy. It's a bad to the bone sonar, no doubt. And even though forward facing sonar is so deadly and it can help you break down so much water, if that broke, I would stay out here fishing. If that broke... I would pick all my stuff up and leave. I, I would rather go fishing with just a spool line, a couple jigs and my Vexlar, than basically all the rest of this gear combined. So I know that was a kind of a long rant, but I think it's head and shoulders over the 28. I would seriously think about upgrading. Even if you have a 28, the 30 is so much more dialed. Um, it's just crispy, it's butter, and you can really fine tune your jig and the depth range you're fishing. And, if fish are suspended in odd depths too, you can really kind of dial that in with the six and 12 foot zoom. So yeah, I know it's a long video, very raw uncut, but this is just, this is just me enjoying probably the last day of ice fishing kind of around the South Metro. So thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end. Oh, oh, I didn't even talk about the goodies. I didn't even talk about what was in the fish's mouth. I apologize. This is a katana. 27 inch ultralight with an ultralight spring bobber. I'm obsessed with the spring bobbers or an indicator in general Just because I can see the lightest bite I also love an ultralight because it's extremely parabolic and especially fishing in shallow water It kind of eats the whole hook set of the fish Especially when they're not too far away And this is probably my second favorite bait in the entire world. This is a clam pro tackle half ant Besides that it would be a pinhead this has caught more crappies and gills and perch for me than basically anything else. 
besides a pinhead. And yeah, other than that, Spooler Elite, three pound floral. Coleman grill, some hot grease, and beautiful weather. So now, 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 the video is over. I'll probably expand a little bit. I kind of want to get back to fishing here without filming, just kind of in that last half an hour, the golden hour, because I'm going to find a new pod, probably a crappies or something, and just mow them down and just really enjoy kind of the last day of fishing here in the South Metro for me. So thank you so much to each and every one of you who has watched the videos all winter long. We've got a lot coming up. We've got big plans for kind of later in this winter and this spring. Big, big plans, some new changes, and it's all good. So thank you so much for watching. I guess another look you said, and stay tuned. And as always, with the adventure. Move ahead, oh my pretty babe. Something ain't right. Got to find a way to move ahead. Oh, my pretty baby.